We are live. Woohoo! Hello, everyone. Yay! Two right. hands. Woo. Welcome to this live. And we're going a little slow so that all the languages can come on and join us. We're going to dive into what's parenting got to do with it. And with me, I have Sarah Gandinetti and Dr. Dane here. And they have experienced a lot of parenting also together since they are brother and sister. Ooh. So they're like, they're like exponentialized experts. Mm -hmm. um, do and I think, that, do you know that our parents wrote a parenting book? It's called Everything Not to Do as a Parent <laughs> by the Hears. And now this is the book that we're going to partly explore today as well. So <laughs> we do you think we can go? What do you guys get? Yes. Yeah, let's go. We've been on for a minute and three seconds. OK, if that's not enough time. Nothing is. Hello. <laughs> Wait, we've been on for 69 seconds now. <laughs> that is why I was a difficult child to parent. OK, <laughs> that's why you are uh, we get to that later anyway. <laughs> I am wondering, just to kick it off, what is it about parents that make them so important in our lives? Even after we grow up, even after they die, they're still seemingly important. What is that about? Sarah, why don't you take it? I'm taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's where we learned to be in this reality. It's where we learned like right from wrong, good and bad. It's their structures that were handed to us and how to approach the world and living. And so what I see a lot of the times is we'll like, I think Dane, you facilitated a woman. I don't remember what class it was for like almost an hour at the mic about her dad. And then it was like, she found, you found out later <laughs> that her dad would, had been dead for like 10 years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because it's the, like, it, you know, when you hear those little voices in your head, you know, we're aware of the world around us, but a lot of those voices are the implants of the right, wrong, good, and bad that we got from mom and dad. And so um, it's like, it's our structure that we're handed, like the blueprint, here's how to create your life because parents are just handing down points of view constantly. Yeah, and it starts, the thing is what we don't realize is it starts in the womb, mm. the womb, the womb, womb. It starts in there, in the tummy. Because as a being, you're highly energetically aware. And so what happens is you're aware of every energy that's going on for mom and dad and everybody they interact with. But of course, you have way more time with mom. I mean, you're with mom constantly from the moment you're conceived until you're born. So without even before we're even cognitive, we develop a structure of reality. And we keep referring to this word structure because that's the biggest thing that sticks us is when we buy a structure of the nature of reality that's not ours. And, and so we're so inundated with it and nobody talks about it. Access is the only thing I've ever, I, there are lots of things actually that go back and, and try to get you free from it, but, but nobody talks about it. Basically it's not out there in the world except what happened after what happened after you could talk. But one of the questions we ask in parenting classes is, what percentage of who, what, where, when, why, and how you are and are not and can be and can't be did you buy from your mama, mother and your father before the age of two? And I go, okay, more than 50%, yes. More than 100%, yes. More than 1,000%, yeah. And it just keeps going and going and going. And so in a very real sense, the foundation of what we consider real and true comes from them. And then what happens is at two years old, you learn this word, no, at which point you're like, hmm. Okay, I'm my own thing now, you know, except you've already become them. And then what a lot of people do is when they get to being a teenager, there's this need to try to prove they're not anything that their parents were as a way of trying to have themselves. And that alone gives us an indication of how dynamically we've already bought that we are every point of view they have. Well, so I can, I can, when you're talking about the structure, so I can often hear me sounding like my mother or using the same words as my mother and like and it irks me and then i go to resistance of that so is there another way i could be with that that isn't from like oh my god not become my mother yes Sarah? i would 
Yeah, I would say that I can steal this one from being you because it's really all about being you and getting access to that and unparenting you so that you can be present with your kids or even in your life. It's not even always just with kids. It's like unparenting you is with everything that you're choosing. And so my favorite question that Dane gave us is, who am I being right now? And if I were being me, what Hmm. would I choose? What would I be aware of? What would I say right now to this person or this child that gives you access Like a short story, I once was trying to get my daughter, my 16 year old daughter, who um, has a lot of access to her being because of these tools, uh, to try on a two piece bathing suit before she took it on a trip. And I've given my kids permission to ask me, who are you being right now? And I was like, you're not leaving this house until I see that bathing suit. And (laughs) And she was like, no. That's weird. I'm not doing that. I'm not putting on a bathing suit for like just so you can look at my body. And then she said that I was like, "Oh my god, I'm being my dad. My dad used to do that to me." And I mm-hmm. I stopped everything and I, he, and she had said like, "Who are you being?" And I was like, "I'm being my dad. Go have a good time. I apologize. This is not what I required to create with you." You know, but it was that question that that empowered me to like snap out of it and go, "Wait a minute." You know? Mm-hmm. That's so cool. And also knowing you, this is another interesting thing is we anytime we buy a point of view or a way of being that's not us we will deliver it with such intensity and so if anybody who knows sarah it's like you know cat you and i know sarah and we know that put on your bathing suit so i can see it before you go out of that i mean sorry that is not sarah you know it's so clear from the outside when somebody's doing something that Mm -hmm. has that kind of weird icky intensity that's not them And yet we find ourselves. So this is a great example of her doing it with with her 16 year old daughter and her daughter going, no, I know what's true for me. And you are not going to gaslight me into this. Sorry, no matter how angry you get. And what a what a great example for how we could all be. Sorry, they're birds and I love birds. Um, And they're like, hi, Um, bright, shiny things. But what a great example of how we could all be if we would choose where it's like, no, I know you're my parent, but you know what? Your job was to give birth to me and show me how to be successful in life, not show me how to judge myself more. Well, meme. Meme. (laughs) And it's interesting because when you look at that, so your daughter has a choice, Sarah, and you had a choice. Like you both had a choice in that moment. And I was looking at this, So when my daughter was growing up, in the beginning, I thought my main job was to protect her from anything that could ever possibly hurt her. That was like, that was my job. And then, good mom, exactly. And then after a while, I realized that she grew as much from her mistakes, as her successes, as her choices, as her questions. So if you look at that, like, what is, what's your main job as a parent Mm. from your point of view? Um. To make my points of view as irrelevant as possible to their lives and to empower them to know that they have choice. And I always talk about how anything that they choose, it's like, I've got your back. And we have like a system where something doesn't really work out or even when it does. But a lot of times they want to talk to you about the things that don't work out is that we talk about the choice. We don't talk about them. So it's not like you made a wrong choice. It's like, hey, what did this choice create? And so there's an empowerment that goes with that. Um, And one other thing that I will add in here that Dane changed my entire reality with parenting with was he asked me one time, does your kid know, and this is like about the protection thing, does your kid know that you trust them? And the answer at that time was hell no. I was not feeling any trust into my kid. I had to be ahead of them, 10 steps ahead of them, always protecting them from any wrong choice or bad thing or whatever, which is where that, that was a good mom like you, Katerina. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) but if you're not trusted or you're not told that you're you you are deserving of trust a you don't learn to trust yourself your awareness your knowing ever you're always looking to that little voice who's telling you right and wrong like because your parents were impelling it because they didn't trust you you know and you don't actually ever get to spread your wings like i i realized like my kids weren't told that i trust them and they were not being taught how to trust themselves and so that one, I can, I, Dane and I were walking in, like, I think we were in North Carolina or something. I don't know. We were walking out of lunch and you asked him that question and it was like, time stood still. 
And I was like, that, that's what I'm going to implement today. Right now, this changes. My kids are going to know that I trust them to choose, not mm -hmm. what I want them to be or what I think they should choose, but to choose and that I have their back. And that wow. changed, changed everything. Well, looking at what that has created since you made that choice, Wow. And somebody put in the comments, what I've learned is it's never too late to change your relationship with your kids. Yeah. And it's so friggin' true and beautiful. And I'm so glad you brought this up because I, I, because one of the things I do is I'll look at what used to be and how somebody chooses something. I don't necessarily know what it is and how different it is now. It's just, and what you have with them now is so beautiful. And for me, I revel in that. And I think a lot of people do like you revel in the beauty of, of people interacting in a way that we as beings could and should, that makes everything greater for all of us. Right. And so here you are. And with that one question, but that one question and your choice to go, wow, like you got the info you needed to realize the lens you were looking through because for like you, you are an extremely trustworthy person. If you say you're going to do something, you fucking do it. Okay. And I am an extremely trustworthy person. It's like, I will take care of things better than whoever owns them. But I was never trusted as a kid and neither were you. We had parents who did that thing of, well, you, we can't trust you. My job is to let you know everything that could go wrong and to let you know that you're probably going to be the responsible party for it to make sure that you don't do that. Like it was as though as little kids, we were these evil creatures that needed to be needed to have the world protected from us which is an interesting perspective. So here you are, you know, doing many things empowering, but then there's this major element of, of not empowering them. And this is so, uh, sorry, ADHD, of not empowering them. So for me, this empowering our kids to know that they have choice is such a, a, a big element of, I would, and I so love everything that you said, Sarah. And I want to add one other element in addition to the acknowledgement of this, empowering them to know they have choice. And to know there's no right choice or wrong choice, just that choice creates. And certain choices will create what you desire more than other choices. And it's not wrong if you choose one of those choices that didn't create something. Let's talk about it like you do now. And it's so beautiful to see your kids being them. And I want to add one other element that is very funny because I don't know that anybody ever talks about it as far as what we're here to be for our kids. But it, have fun with them. Enjoy them. Like enjoy them as beings. Enjoy their quirks. Enjoy their their limited points of view. Enjoy their expansive possibly uh, points of view. Enjoy the beautiful being that is in front of you, and let them know that they are valuable exactly as they are. That they're a gift to you. That they can always know that you trust them, and that they can trust you to never judge them, but mm -hmm. to always be there and have their back. I but think that's more fun. That's the best work description ever. Enjoy your kids. That's your job. Right? That's your Holy. job. Enjoy your who, kids. <laughs> dude, whoever gets there. You know what I mean? Because, of course, it's like if you had, if you had, uh, here's the funny part with all these humanoid kids. If you think your job is to control them, you have an impossible job on your hands. And the only thing that you can do is go into constant states of judgment of you and them and then try to institute more structure and more control all of which they will resist. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, so let's go back to what you were saying, but it, it's absolutely, I mean, what, and, and it's the structure of parenting that we've learned that makes it so that doesn't seem possible for people. Well, I wanna, I just wanna, in, about the trust part. So one of the things that I notice is that trust begets trust. So once you start to actually build that you trust them, that you trust you, something, something really magical occurs. So could you kind of dive into that trust part a bit more? Because it also, they are asking about guilt. And I think guilt is such a, the opposite of trust. Yeah. Well, I want to say that that's so true. Trust begets trust. And I want to add that to the parents um, description mm. of is actually teaching your child to trust themselves. Yeah. And how do you do that? You do that by trusting them, but you also do it by trusting you. And the difficulty that humanoid parents face is they're not human. They can't. And, and both of our parents parented like humans. Okay. And, and I have my mom who did a different thing, but, but both of our parents parented from 
children have no value. They, it's, it's never, well, actually that changed when you came along, Sarah, and, and everything became about what do you want, sweetie? But, but uh, while well, not simultaneously, which was great. Talk about confusion. But when I was being parented, it was like my, it was never, what would you like? It was always, here's what we're doing. Here's the part you're going to play. You better do it perfectly. And so I was never taught that I could trust myself to make, like, I would even go like, Hey dad, I'm going to go, um, you know, I was, I don't know, 16 or 17. I'm like, Hey, I'm going to go up to UCLA for the night, uh, spend the night with my girlfriend at her brother's place. And we went through this list. You're not going to have sex, are you? I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going to have sex, Dad. I'm not going there specifically for that. I wouldn't do such a thing. Are you kidding? No, never do. And he went through this whole list. And here I was, one of the most trustworthy teenagers. I was not a, I didn't rebel outwardly. I was very kind to everybody. And, and so here I was taught that I couldn't trust myself. So I grew up thinking I had no ability to choose. I had no ability to create my life. Because I was parented, well, I'll say because I was parented that way, call it whatever you want, but that, that the result of that created that effect. So it's taken me decades to find that I actually have choice and that I and, and it's okay whatever I choose. And so this this Sarah, maybe you can talk more on the trust idea. Well, I think what you both hit on was that trusting you, is what a lot like it's the unparenting pro part of this process so like we're talking about this and how you can be with kids but we've really got to start looking at like how we can be this for ourselves now whether you have kids or not um because starting to trust me is what allowed me to understand that whole thing that you just described of how i wasn't taught to trust me mm -hmm. and then how do i be that for my kids and so many situations like i love that we're talking about trust right now because so many parenting situations are just done the moment I go, but do I trust them? And the minute I go, yes, or are they trustworthy? And it's yes. I know they've got this and I'm just here to facilitate the pieces that show up after the choice, not to make the choice for them or to tell them how to choose. They all know that. So like, I don't know if that's giving them more information, but like you talked about the guilt and I'm like, how much of where trust was uh, not delivered, instead guilt was when we were growing up. So it's like, don't do this thing that I don't trust you about, because if so, I will use guilt to manufacture what choice you should have or she should have made and also feel really guilty about every choice you make that reflects wrong on me. Because so much of parenting, what I see of having done so many classes now is most rules, a lot of rules that parents put in place are for their own avoidance of judgment. So like, hey, don't act this way because of what they'll think of me as a parent. Hey, don't say this in front of grandma and grandpa because we don't want them to judge what kind of parent I am. It's like teaching the kid that the outside judgment is mo more valuable and that if you do that to mommy or daddy, then you should feel really guilty. So those two like intertwine constantly wow. a way to, to control us. Well, it also teaches them that the outer judgment is the most important one ever. Yeah. And that judgment is the most important ever. But also what Sarah said about when you do that to mommy and daddy, mm. this is a thing that most parents institute as though your choice was against me. Your choice to stay out too late, too late, quote unquote, your choice <laughs> to stay out that late was against me. No, it's not. And, and then what does that do? That's a total gaslighting relationship because now for every choice you might make, is it against mommy or daddy? And you don't even realize you're doing it, but how many, how much of the sense you don't have choice is so you don't go against mommy and daddy. And so they don't make you feel bad and wrong and don't make you feel guilty, which is a way of letting you know how wrong you are. Wow. I did not. And, and then we also, if you're wired, like a lot of us are, you want to take care of people. You want to make their lives better. You want to heal them. You want to change what doesn't make them happy. And parents will use that against you as a way of getting you to be a good little child, quote unquote. But basically what you are is you're a pile and structure of judgment against yourself based on being parented this way. Now, I also want to make one small caveat. There are certain kids who... Now, nah, actually, I was going to say there's certain we have to deal with each situation individually, right? Mm 
And there are certain kids who need something different. But if you look back at what you gave them and what you created is what they're choosing, is your child a delinquent now because the being is a delinquent? Is this some other lifetime stuff coming in or something? Are they doing it to torture you? Or were, were there a lot of choices you put in that they're resisting and reacting to and rebelling against that's creating them being that? And But not, and this is a total side note caveat, but there are a lot of people out there who are like, I don't have perfect kids. I, this doesn't apply to me. It's like, actually, it does. It dynamically, it may apply to you more than everybody else. Not really, but you get the idea. And so if you can look at the genesis of how they got to where they are and recognize that they're a being too, what can I change today that will allow this to be easier and allow this to work better for both of us? Well, and I think there's two things that come up. One is that sometimes parenting, if you allow it to expand the perspective, if you go beyond the smaller time perspective, like how is this going to be next year? And if you really look at like we're 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 actually creating a relationship that could be 20, 50, even into other lifetimes, you know. So if you looked at it from that perspective what would it be like then to, to build trust in a different way? Yeah. One of the things I talk about a lot is I, with my kids, I don't know when I started this, but I started to talk to, you know, when you're, I oh got ADHD. You're growing up, they're always like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Or where do you want to be by the time you're 25? And something hit me one time. I was like, well, what if I just talk to their 20, their 25 year old self? So I, mm. I'm constantly in conversation with now, they're 25 and 23, the older two. So you have to talk to their 45 year old self, but I'm yeah. always looking at, Hey, what is there? The 25 year old being required to hear today that will create that future is ease right away. And so there'll be things that come out of my mouth that they'll even look at me at like 12, 13, 14 years old and be like, huh? But it'll be so funny to see it show up in a conversation two or three years later. And you can perceive the 25 year old version of them or self receiving. I don't know if that made any sense, but it's a really cool thing to like play with as you said, is like that broader spectrum. Wow. That's so <laughs> brilliant. And so Thank you. beyond reality, quote unquote, beyond time, because time is an invention. You know, it's a structure around which we learn to create judgment and limitation of us. And that is a very doable thing because you know, we know you can do inner child work, quote unquote, and communicate with your younger self. Well, if you can do that, you don't think you can communicate with somebody's future self? That's brilliant. So cool. Well, so let's turn it even more because in Access, we say that we actually pick our parents and we pretty much know what's going to happen in the beginning of our lives. So yeah, you I'm over that point of view. I'm like, I picked my brother. <laughs> And do we actually pick our students as well? Maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. that's even more. Well, the reason we started bringing that up is to get people free. It is an awareness that, you know, I've had this awareness that we pick not only our parents, but we are aware of the major events that are going to occur for at least the first 15 years of our lives. And so it's it's an interesting thing to recognize that that if we pick them, there was a reason for it. And so you want to ask, what did I know in picking these people? What gifts did I get that I haven't acknowledged? And what gifts could I choose now that I've been seeing as a curse or been mm -hmm. seeing as a wrongness? Because I can look at a lot of, and also I want to, um, I want to make this caveat, you know, it sounds like we're painting parents as bad people, or if you're a parent, you know, like we're painting our parents as bad people, whatever. That's not actually my point of view. Your parents, our parents did the best job they could with the tools they had available, but there's a freedom in being able to look at it and not sugarcoat it. So you don't have to separate from whatever it is anymore. So you can see the part of that that you bought as you and have been functioning from where you actually have a different choice because it's not actually you. It's their structure of judgment. It's their point of view. It's their whatever that you tried to turn yourself into to be a good little boy or a good little girl 
or to resist being a good little boy or a good little girl because we're all wired different. And your parents are doing the best damn job they can with the tools they have available. And, well, and to the extent that we don't have to judge them, we don't have to judge us. And it's also been very helpful for me the other way around. So I look at my daughter and look, she picked me and her dad. We may not be together, but she's getting different things from both of us. Yeah. And just having that, like that perspective, okay, it may seem completely wacky that this is the parents she picked. And I can totally see the different things that she's getting from both of us in different ways. So it could also be like, you could look at it from both directions. My parents yeah. and the parenting one. And Sarah, you wanted to add something, I'm sorry. No, I was just celebrating. This is this is celebration. Oh. Yes. This? <laughs> That's a lot of celebration. <laughs> you, I wanna do you, you sure you can handle that much celebration? Hey, it's a party. No, wait, wait, wait. It's almost, now it's a party. Okay, two people are celebrating. Woo! <laughs> so, um, do you want to add something else then except the celebrating part? No, I just, I, I, I agree with everything you guys said about that. <laughs> So, um, so I want to go back to the trust again. So one of the tools, like one of the perspective to, that I use a lot in parenting is the five elements of intimacy. So trust is one of them. And then you have allowance, gratitude, vulnerability, honor. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the other ones, because they're so amazing, both to our parents and to our kids. Honoring trust, allowance, vulnerability, and gratitude. And what that allows you to have is intimacy with yourself or another. And so honoring means to treat with regard. Okay. Which if you just did that, if you just honored your children, rather than seeing them as all the things and, you know, in the class, we'll go more into that. But if you just did that and treated them with regard and treated you with regard. So you have to have this with you before you can have it with anybody else. Trust, we've talked about. Allowance, which is where everything is an interesting point of view, meaning no matter what, you don't judge them and you don't judge you and you don't judge anything, okay? Vulnerability is where you lower your walls and barriers and you're like, I'm here, warts and all. How freeing would it have been? Because that you can see how each of these elements plays such a dynamic role and how if it were there, it would have been different for you. But if it's there for you, it can be different for your kids. Like with vulnerability, for example, you know, with access kids, they walk in and mom is having a crappy day and, you know, mom can say, hey, I'm sorry. I just snarped at you. I'm having a crappy day. I apologize. Mom, what's going on? Well, there's this weird energy. Oh, mom, who does that belong to? Oh, OK, it's gone. And I'm sorry for snapping at, you know, like but vulnerability is like, I'm not perfect. I'm doing the best fucking job I can. And hello, I'm here, warts and all. And there's nothing to prove. Hmm. And then gratitude. Dude, what would it be like if your parents were grateful for you? And what would it be like if you were grateful for your kids? We know how wonderful it is when somebody is truly grateful for you. And one of the other things I ask parents to do every single day is tell their kids every single day they're grateful for them. Tell them they are a phenomenal creature, a gift this world has never seen. They can create anything they desire and will help even if we don't know how. And I am so grateful for you you add so much to my life that I would not have without you. And I'm so grateful you were on this planet. So honoring trust, vulner allowance, vulnerability, and gratitude are the five elements of intimacy that when you have it with you, and I hope I'm answering the question right. I realize I may no. totally miss the question. No. Um, <laughs> no. Just celebrating again. <laughs> but when you have it with you, it's like then, but look at this for a moment. Look at if you just went through those five elements and looked at your mom and looked at, you know, in your, in your world, just get a sense of, did she have this or not? You know, did she have a lot of this or a little of this? And most of our parents, if you look at it, they had very little of any of those, but look at the world they grew up in. Look at the, the fact that they grew up with, you know, with their parents having lived through the depression amongst other things. And it was a world of structure. How do we get so fucking lucky to be here with these access tools now where we literally can change the basis, the foundation of reality and melt it? I mean, which is, of course, why we're having the conversation to give people a different mm -hmm. choice. 
But I say again, if we can, if we cannot judge our parents, if we can also then, because if you, if this is a miraculous thing, if you're a parent, okay, or if you had them, but especially <laughs> if you're a parent, if you can get to the place where you were actually in allowance of everything that occurred for you with your parents, acknowledge it, don't hide it. Because the option most people think they have to do is hide from it. Like, no, I, it was perfect. They love me. And I'm like, ooh, okay. But if you can acknowledge what was actually there and get out of judgment of it, remove the judgment element, mm -hmm. what you instantly do is come out of judgment of 90% of what you're judging you for as a parent. Because 90 plus percent of what you're judging you for as a parent is what you're doing that was like your parents that didn't work any better for you than it does for your kids. And sorry, Sarah, I know you had, to, there was stuff to add, but I- No, that was awesome. I, the, the only thing I would add is uh, with the elements of violence of intimacy is a allow it to get messy. So we that that need of perfect perfect parenting that doesn't actually exist. Um, even with the five elements, it's like I am doing the vulnerability or the gratitude this way, and it's right. It's like, <laughs> gosh, when they're when they're being assholes, tell them how grateful you are for them. You know, when you're being an asshole, get vulnerable and be willing to say sorry. You know, like, hey, I'm being I'm being an asshole right now. Wow. Um, and then the other the other way that I've like interacted with the five elements as a parent is what like I allow them to be my own facilitators. So if there's a situation and I have my stuff up and they have their stuff up or whatever's going on or my kid requires something, I'll ask what element can I add here? Which one can facilitate this the greatest? And right away, one will pop. They'll be like, you know what? Just show them a little gratitude and see what shifts. Or <laughs> oh, what allowance can I be for me and them here that would actually totally change this? And so I just kind of talk to them like they're my five facilitators. And I ask which one wants to step forward and which one can we add here? And it, it adds such a different element of, element of um, like opening up the spaces that seem really crunchy. Hmm. Well, oh, it's I love that. And it's interesting because from the beginning, like a lot of things has come up um, that we mentioned, like enjoy your kids, you know, like well, it's about receiving. And what you're also both coming into now, it's like this receiving that increases when you're willing to play with the five elements of intimacy. And I, one of the things that I've been doing with my daughter for a long time, she's very aware and she's very aware of me because she grew up with me. So she will let me know what she's aware of when it comes to me. And I will tell her how grateful I am to be seen, basically. Like, I am super grateful when she tells me, hey, mom, do you want to go home now from this party? I think you're I think you're done. And then I go, oh, God, thank you. Yes, you're correct. Let's go. This little, like this willingness to receive from our parents and from our kids changes everything. It's like that becomes a gift to her when I receive her knowing. Oh, that. Oh, oh wow. Well, there's so much. I cannot wait for this class. Um, we might need to make it a few more days because um, <laughs> there's so much in this area. And that thing of like being received by your parents. Yeah. There's few greater gifts in the world. That is what almost all of us have been looking for. And what most parent, access parents tend to be willing to have that a lot more because of also they don't have to try to be perfect. And any mm -hmm. of you out there that are trying to be perfect, please give yourself a gift. Just stop now. Whatever it looks like, whatever it takes. You got enough tools from this Zoom, this live that we're doing right now. But just make the demand. I'm done. I am so not perfect. And that is OK. But I'm fucking awesome because I'm going to be better tomorrow than I was today. So there you go. That's all any of us can do. But we we don't receive from our kids because we've been taught. And this is what I was trying to convey with the parenting I was talking about that I got, which was we are here. We are the parents. You are here. You are a lesser being. You are the child. And it's like, at what point does that flip? The only time it can flip is if you go, you know what? Fuck you and your points of view about me. But if you don't have to try to prove you're perfect, because we always try to prove the opposite of what we believe we are. If you don't have to try to prove you're perfect, you don't have to try to crush your children and mold them into little perfect versions of you that the world will see as perfect to know how perfect you are, which was interesting because when we were kids, all, all the people around were like, oh my God, you must be such great people. Look at your kids. And then you'd get home and they'd be like, rah, rah, rah. and it's like, wow, no, you're not great people. You're assholes. You're not kind at all. But everything that brought up, talking about, but 
this thing, if we don't have to be perfect and also allowing it to get messy as part of that. And I love when you said that, allow it to get messy. That is right there. I'm just emphasizing what we've already said, but goodness, what a, what a, if people just took the last 35 minutes and instituted it, oh, oh. Hmm. Well, I want to, do you have yeah, something? Yeah. yeah, go for it. So Dane, you, you did this way, but there's also this way. So if I'm trying to uphold like a perfect image of a parent, there's so much about me that I don't let my kids see. And I was totally. doing like, like, they don't get to know me. And like what you said about your daughter, knowing, like knowing you can, can mm -hmm. perceive when you want to leave a party. It's like, that's because you let her in. And so many parents are parenting from never letting the kids see and be with the actual being that is you. And then they blame their kid for why they can't be them, but it's really that choice. And so the perfection creates the comfortable distance that you're always trying to uphold. So the kid doesn't see that you made mistakes too, or that you, you know, unless you project in the world, don't do this because I made the mistake, but it's this weird distance. And when I started, when I became a being you certified facilitator, um, shout out to the book, being you changing, being, the being, you, being you changing the world, being you changing the world. I, yeah. I couldn't avoid, especially with my kids, like being me anymore. And it was kind of like what you said, like sitting down and being like, Hey, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm done. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be me. And we're going to see what that creates. And the spaces and places and the invitation it's been to them to be them when I started being me. Um, and there's way more to explore about what being me even is, but every day I have access to that with them. So there's, there's just a, a communion that shows up from that choice. If you continue to, to be, be with it, if that makes any sense, I'm not sure. Beautiful. It definitely does. And it leads me into this, um, probably maybe last area, who knows that I wanted to tap into, which is, energetics and congruency because one of the things kids are so psychic so one of the things that i had to change with my daughter was that she could always hear when i talked to somebody she could hear if something was up something was wrong and in the beginning when she asked i would say no no it's all good it's all okay but she knew it wasn't so i completely stopped and said no i actually get really pissed off at something i don't need to tell her what but i need i needed to like say this is what's going on and i wanted to talk a little bit about what that energetic part of parenting is the willingness to actually be congruent with your own energy and what happens when because our parents in many cases were not like what we what we heard and what actually was going on was two different things Yes. Well, go ahead, Sarah. You, yeah. you go. I'll go after you. go. Well, the thing that you're doing in that is you're acknowledging her awareness and acknowledging that she has energetic awareness. And that is one of the greatest gifts also that we can give our kids. And what's interesting is so we're talking about all these different elements. And what's interesting is when you're being you, they're all there. Yeah. And it and, and so here's the thing is any area in which you, this may seem deficient for you, the more you choose it, the more it will open up all of the areas. So, so it's not one of these things of, oh, okay, I'm going to get to work because I have this solid limitation and this one and this one. It's like, just choose one of these things that makes you lighter and, and just work with that. What would it take to have more of this? And what can I choose that will allow me to be more of this? And and if you'll notice, just the perspectives we've been talking about, about are already melting a lot mm -hmm. of stuff. So I just want to point that out. But the in this trusting their awareness or you trusting their awareness, acknowledging their awareness, acknowledging that they have it and acknowledging that their awareness is that subtle feather touch on your cheek is so mm -hmm. huge because it gives them the gift of just knowing that they know they don't have to go through all the machinations in their head to try to see if this is the right thing or the wrong thing, or, or they're aware that you're upset and you acknowledge it. They don't have to go to, Oh my God, what did I do wrong? Yeah. Cause most of our kids, when we feel angry, they feel wrong. When we feel wrong, they feel wrong. So they don't have to go through any of that self doubt in the same way that we all did because we're psychic and aware, but we didn't have parents where that was even a remote possibility for them to even acknowledge us for. And so 
in acknowledging their energetic awareness is also one of the greatest gifts that we can be for them. Um, I would, I'm going to add a little story time. I'll make it quick, but um, with each of my kids, Dane gave me a different, his own, his awareness about hmm. being hmm. with them. And with my daughter, Talia, the 16 year old, um, he said to me, uh, listen, listen, and she will tell you. And um, sounds like a fortune cookie. <laughs> But, but I did. And um, it's where I got more awareness of my energetic awareness was being her parent. And um, so there was a time she it was before she could talk. She might have been I'm trying to think of the year, like 15 months, 16 months or something like that. And I'm still like being with that. Uh, listen. And we had just moved to a new house and uh, we're about to go get on the freeway entrance I knew and I go to get on and she starts saying no 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 mama no and pointing at the freeway and shaking her hand mm -hmm. okay so I pulled off I listened and I pulled off and I was like so then I, I didn't I wasn't in a hurry so I was like well which which way we which way we get you want to go and she would just point and point and point and lo and behold we come up on another freeway entrance going the same direction we needed to go and I was like well that was awesome so I thought that was the experiment. But when I got on the freeway, it was as if the resurrection had happened in Los Angeles because there was no cars on the freeway. I'm like, well, this is weird. And I look in the rear view mirror and there was a 12 car pileup that had just happened. And there were fatalities. I found out later. I didn't couldn't see that in my review. But I know that listening to her and her awareness is why I wasn't part of that that day. Whether I would have been in the accident or whether I would just been stuck in a lot of traffic. I don't I don't know. But. I know that that gift of, Hey, listen, they have, they have awareness too, um, created that magic that day. And I have done my very best. I am not a hundred percent at it. I am not a perfect parent, nor do I want to be, but listening and being willing to receive a child's awareness on people, on situations, on creation only makes your life way greater, way greater because you have these little magicians running around that have, have their own awareness. Mm. Okay. Did anybody else get major chills on that one? Dude, I, I, and I want to point out something in working with so many people. And that is when they were kids, they did something like that and their parent didn't listen mm. and validated it. And, and these are people that are going around appearing to be very pathetic, okay? And in other words, they're proving how pathetic they are to everybody, everybody. And what's interesting is I'll have one of these people in a class get to the microphone and ask a question. And I'm so grateful you brought this up, Sarah, because this gives me a lot more insight into the way this can occur. Um, and I'll ask them, because they're doing, they're doing, this pathetic thing to such a degree that nothing changes it and no one changes it and nothing else ever comes in. And when I sense that, I know they're proving, they're proving the opposite of what they believe they are, what they know they are. They're stuck in a PTSD loop basically. And so one of the questions I will ask them is, okay, so how old are you being? And they'll go, Oh, one, two, you know, whatever, eight, 20, whatever. Um, usually it's a child age. And I say, okay, what happened? And they'll look and they'll go, I'm not sure. And I go, okay, so let me ask you a question. I, I'll tell them, one of the things I'm aware of is when you were a kid and you created a miracle or used a power, mm. and in this case, I'm on, I'm on, from now on I'm gonna add, or had an awareness that was beyond reality that wasn't acknowledged or it was invalidated, especially if something bad happened. Like if you were like, oh dude, shut up kid. You know, or, oh, cute kid, except you were listening. This was your choice to listen. And, like, it's very possible you guys would have been in the accident and not nice things would have happened. Because when you when you talk about her urgency and then that connection, it's like, you, dude, you both contributed so much to each other. But if you could imagine she were in that, she knew at 16 months old and she was not listened to and then they get in an accident. And mm -hmm. then not only would they get in an accident, but then mom would have drama and maybe go to the hospital or maybe somebody died or something like what 
you're <laughs> did he disappear for everyone yeah that's so good it was so good it's like literally it's a big celebration sarah yeah and if someone did that it's like the big celebration <laughs> So I'm wondering if he's going to come back. Well, what I can, what I can explore a little bit with you, Kat, yeah. too, what he was talking about is that, that, that energetic lockup that will keep us from then ever sharing our awareness ever again. And it can yeah. happen like with, with Talia at 16 months old, if, she, if I did, if I went ahead and got on the freeway and Dane was describing the, the trauma and the drama and that situation, not being, but then add not being listened to and that you knew how much mm. do you invalidate your knowing for the rest of your life because of whatever that connection to that moment was, you know? And so, and what, yeah. Well, it's so amazing because I just thinking of this, one of the things that occurs when we do acknowledge it is that, again, it begets the awareness because if you can acknowledge for being aware of something and for and people actually taking action, according to your awareness, you're going to expand your sono awareness because you'd like to have more of that. So you're going to start. So we're also, we don't even know what this is going to look like for the kids growing up now. Like with, with you know, whatever, like any parent that is acknowledging awareness, energetic awareness in kids. Hello. Oh Dr. my God. Peter. Yeah. Welcome. How about that? Yeah. That. Hey. Hey. Yeah. yeah, you, yeah. Hello. We're saying that when you acknowledge energetic awareness, it like begets it. So then it grows even yes. bigger. Who knows and what Talia will be aware of? Who moving. knows what Talia will be aware of? And how many of you out there did you have an awareness like that that you can't even remember right now? But you're afraid, number one, you're afraid to trust your awareness and you pretend you're pathetic. You are not pathetic. Ask, how old am I being? And what awareness did I have that I tried to share that nobody would let me? that nobody would receive and what can I, and then, or what miracle did I create or what power did I use that I've been pretending does not exist? Because what this is, is this is where people are pretending that that doesn't exist for them is what's mm -hmm. going on because it didn't, it wasn't allowed to exist there. So everything that is right now, I'm good about Pada Baka 9, Choice Boys, Bovets and Beyonds. I Love. just want to say really quick, like we have, so we have a parent uh, uh, going beyond the parent trap call that Dane and I are doing on the 19th. And this is one of the things I'm so excited about to explore because it's not just a parenting call, like the action of parenting, you have to have a kid. It's looking at all these places while we talk to the parents or explore the thing about parenting where you get to go, oh shit, like my, the parenting, what's it got to do with it? This is how I'm creating my whole life based on something that happened mm -hmm. back then, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, that is in every class that you do, Dane, is like people look, you, you bringing people back to the way that they engage with their parents' realities and how they're creating from them. Yeah, well put. And I just, this, this particular one struck, ooh, I'm doing a little self-facilitation right now because this particular one really struck home for me. And I, I've learned to acknowledge that when it, like not only did I get chills when you were talking about that, I was in recognizing that I'm, I'm asking myself right now, okay, how old am I being? And there's a lot of ages that come up and I'm like, oh, cause I've been, I've been walking. Cause what happens is I don't know how to describe it very well verbally, but in the case with Talia, if you look at that, it's like, if she's not acknowledged for it, it's kind of like cutting her arm off. You know, and then she tries to go through the world with the lie that she doesn't have awareness about the this area. And she knows she should, so it causes judgment. And she knows she does, so it causes the idea that she can't actually access her. And and you acknowledging that and you following that awareness, it's like she has that. And that's one of the reasons why she is the person she is right now. The one who's like, mom, no, uh-uh. You taught me that I have awareness and now you suffer. No, you taught me that I have awareness. So you can't make me go against it, dude. So all of you out there, how many places did you have awareness that was invalidated, not received? How often did it lead to something? Oh my God. I just looked at our family business that failed. I was like, 
I knew what we could do different. So my entire life, not been, except for the last few years, I avoided business because those areas in which we are invalidated are the ones we want to avoid the most because mm -hmm. being invalidated that way is it feels like such an assault on our very being and it and we don't want to experience that again so rather than go and make a choice in business let's say in my case for example rather than go and make a choice in business i'd like uh, -uh you make all the choices i'm going to be over here and hopefully it will work out well i'll still contribute energy i'm creative as fuck but don't ask me to choose anything because I don't know how many of you out there are going, don't ask me to choose anything because I don't know because of many situations that occurred when you were a kid, find one, how old am I being? Try to get a sense of the energy of what happened. And then everything that you chose and all the structures that you created to avoid and everything you've been avoiding that is your awareness, we destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys, povets, and beyonds. And if you're new and don't know what that is, go to theclearingstatement.com and use it because it is a tool of magnitude to change stuff. And now we claim and own that you actually have a lot more awareness of, wow, oh my goodness, this is an interesting awareness, which is one of the things I love. We'll get together with a group of people and what it, they bring up something totally new that I've never seen before. But this is a very interesting awareness these areas, apparently these areas that we've been avoiding the most are the ones where we have the most invalidated awareness. So what that means is we're avoiding it based on the lie that I don't know what to choose here, but in actuality, you do know what to choose. It was, you were just never allowed to, or it was invalidated or somebody went against it. And so now you have all these areas. Wow. How many areas of your life are you avoiding being present with because of something like this? How many areas of your life are you avoiding choosing because, in, because of something like this? And how many areas are you avoiding the awareness that you have awareness because of something like this? Mm -hmm. Everything that is times a godzillion, we destroy and uncreate it all, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, shorts, boys, povads, and beyonds. Wow. The class and, begins. And one of the things that this kind of pops up in me is also, you know how we, we keep looking at, like, how did our parents limit whatever but this is like a simultaneity of gifting and receiving so not only by acknowledging our kids awareness but them also acknowledging our awareness when that starts to become a reality it actually then exponentializes wow. the whole space wow that's beautiful because if you do have kids one of the ways of acknowledging your awareness is by acknowledging and receiving theirs yes and you'll find which i think is exactly what you're saying you'll find all these places where they have awareness and you go oh my god i used to have that or mm -hmm. hopefully you'll go oh i have that too it's just something occurred where i've been pretending i don't mm -hmm. wow it's like it's like sarah's saying you you basically have you're willing to have your kid as your facilitator, your parent as your facilitator, allowing them to have you, but without just literally trusting and acknowledging from that space. I'd like uh, to have that. Yeah. It's a world I'd like to live in. Yeah, me too. Me too. And this is where this is where it begins, you know? Like, I mean, it's begun a long time ago in a lot of other ways, but but this is this can be a totally new beginning yeah. for all of us. I mean, all three of us and a lot of people are commenting that they're a lot lighter after just being together with us today. And mm -hmm. and all three of us are like, oh, you know, but this is this is where it begins that rather than rather than believe that anything that wasn't possible before is still valid. What if it's all possible to change and have different? Yeah, that. Yeah. You you said recently, Dane, not too long ago, um, what if every everything before today was irrelevant? Yeah. Um, what like we really can wake up that way. And you know, there's conversations in here is like it's never too late to start a different relationship with your kids. That and with yourself, <laughs> you know, and like yeah. parents, parents, yourself and your kids, like all the way around. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Well, I think that is a good place to end on for today. 
And thank you both for oh. the ride. Thank you both. And thank everybody who is watching because, you know, this is such a gift to be able to have you and your energetic contribution. And one other thing I want to say is your parents may not have seen the gift that you are. That doesn't mean you're not that gift. And to the best of our ability, we would like to acknowledge you as the gift, as, as a gift in more ways than you could possibly imagine, including your awareness, including your kindness, including the fact that you keep going no matter what has happened to you or occurred for you in your life. And if you're still putting one foot in front of the other, looking for possibilities, no matter what you have experienced, it has not stopped you and it never will. And it will stop stopping you more and more every single day. In other words, whatever had any ability to stop you, it will always become less after today. So mm -hmm. welcome to a totally different possibility. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And bye. bye. Celebratory wave. <laughs>